Hi guys, it's Adam here. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon. If you're thinking about having a total knee replacement or you've just had one, one of the questions you probably have is how long is it going to last for? In this video, I'll explain what we know about the average lifespan of a total knee replacement based on studies which have looked at hundreds of thousands of people. I'll also explain the most common ways that knee replacements fail and what I usually tell people about the chance of being satisfied following knee replacement surgery. As always, this video is for information purposes only and you should please speak to your doctor before making any decisions about your care. Like any mechanical device that moves, over time a knee replacement can wear out. The plastic polyethylene spacer between the two metal components gets worn, which creates debris, and this can result in the implants becoming loose, which can be painful and so they might need changing. This happens more quickly the younger and more active you are, because you're wearing the knee out faster. It also happens more quickly if you have certain medical conditions, and it depends upon the type of implant which is used, but it can happen to anyone. Another way knee replacements fail is through infection. Again, there are definitely factors that increase your risk of this. For example, the risk is almost double if you smoke and is increased by conditions which impair your immune system and certain medications. But even in someone who is completely healthy, infection can still happen. And often the bacteria get to the knee via the bloodstream. For example, if you happen to have a chest infection or urinary tract infection, and this can happen at any time following surgery. The bone around the knee can fracture, which might need surgery to fix it, and sometimes the exact cause of a problematic knee is unclear, but you might have ongoing pain, stiffness or instability. So for lots of reasons, you may end up needing redo or revision surgery, which is more extensive, has a longer recovery and less predictable outcomes than the initial surgery. So, what's the overall chance for an average person having a knee replacement that one of these problems occurs and the knee replacement fails? Well, in 2019, this study was published in The Lancet. The authors looked at national registries of joint replacements from around the world and they combined the results in a meta-analysis. What they found was that 82% of total knee replacements last 25 years, which is pretty good. However, bear in mind that there are lots of factors which can affect this. If you are younger and more active, then the risk of needing revision increases significantly. This study from Oxford, also published in The Lancet, looked at national data from the UK. The lifetime risk of requiring revision surgery in patients who had a total hip or total knee replacement over the age of 70 years was about 5%, with no difference between males and females. For those who had surgery younger than 70 years, the lifetime risk of revision increased and for patients who were male in their early 50s, this risk increased up to 35%. Now these studies include different surgical teams, different implants and different patient groups, but it gives a good ballpark idea that for the average person having a total knee replacement at around age 70, it's likely to last for the rest of your life. But does that mean you'll be happy with it? So far, we've talked a lot about the knee replacement being changed or revised, but that's a different question to whether or not you'll be satisfied. If I gave you a pair of wooden clogs and told you they're much better than trainers because they'll last you longer and you're less likely to need to change them, you'd probably say, well, that's great, but are they as comfortable? And that's exactly the same with the knee. Just because you don't need the knee replacements revising, it doesn't necessarily equate to you being satisfied with it. You might have pain or stiffness that isn't quite bad enough to have a major operation, but means you're not happy. So what's the chance of this happening? Well, the answer depends upon several factors and which study you read. But as a good ballpark estimate, what I usually tell people is that there are three groups of people. The first group, which is around 80%, are satisfied and happy with the outcome of surgery and glad that they had it done. The next group, around 15% of people, are generally satisfied and glad they had their surgery done, but some aspect of it doesn't quite meet their expectations, either in terms of pain or stiffness or stability of the knee, for example. The final group, which is around 5% or 1 in 20 people, have serious problems and they regret having the surgery done and are not happy. So that might surprise you. And the most interesting thing is that sometimes the operation has gone really well. The x-rays look perfect, but the patient still isn't happy and it's a bit of a mystery. So why is this? 
Well, sometimes we don't know. But interestingly, satisfaction rates for hip replacements are generally higher, and we think this is because it's a ball and socket joint, which is replicated very nicely by the implant. The knee is a complex joint, and a normal knee has sliding, rotation, and bending with ligaments that control this. So trying to replicate this with pieces of metal and plastic is difficult, and everyone's baseline anatomy is slightly different, so this is an area where there's lots of research going on at the moment to understand why some people do better than others following knee replacement. So what's the answer? Should you have a knee replacement or not? Well, for me, it comes down to balancing the risks with the benefits. Lots of people I see are in agony because of their knee arthritis. It's waking them up at night time, they can barely walk and it's ruining their lives. So when I tell them there's a 20% chance you won't be fully satisfied, they are perfectly willing to accept that. But for someone who's not quite sure if they're ready for it, there are lots of other things to try first that can be really effective at reducing pain. Weight loss, exercise, physiotherapy, injections, and then knee replacement is really at the end of the line when you've tried everything else. Because even if your operation goes well, you're well in yourself and you have the best surgeon in the world, complications can and do still happen. Knee replacement is major surgery and there is also a risk of serious medical complications such as heart attack, blood clots and stroke, which can be life-threatening, so it isn't something to go into lightly. Again, depending on your medical conditions, the risk of these problems varies, so you should speak to your doctor about it so you're fully informed. I hope you found that useful guys, please remember to hit subscribe and stay tuned for more videos coming up soon.